I had um, the first group of uh, students in today. Um, so we had fifth class from Skull National School and we also had some students from Cape Clear and they absolutely loved the exhibition. Um, as you said about kind of providing a space that is just playful um, and kind of just contrasting to the usual gallery experience, um, like straight away when they came in, as long as like the minute you tell them that they can touch, it's so intuitive, they just go for it and they, they know what to do. You don't have to give instructions. They just, they start playing instantly. And so every single one of the works um, and the gallery was just, it was lit up. Um, and yeah, I had the, kind of the pleasure of being the kind of public engagement um, artist during the last kids exhibition that Tomat was involved in as well. And it was the, the exact same. Um, and there's just, there's something so freeing about allowing that space within the gallery for the for kids to interact. Um, so my job as the public engagement artist is to design um, programs around these kind of exhibitions. Um, so the program that I designed around this exhibition um, is, uh, I'll just put this in here. Um, it's called um, Worlds Within Words. Um, and, um, it's uh, so I was kind of interested in this idea of how of words that don't exist kind of in other languages um, and how they could be kind of used as starting points um, to talk about different languages. Um, so these are just some pictures from today from the kids interacting with it. Um, and this is just an example of um, the kind of the program that I created for the students. Um, so what I did was I researched uh, different words in different languages that uh, we don't have direct translations for. So Irish words uh, such as lith, um, which is a fort where fairies dwell, um, which is normally located in a field or in a marshy land. Um, so we have uh, French words, German words, uh, Tibetan words, um, and so today there was a German child and a French child in the class. Um, so like you were saying, Francesco, of like seeing a child's face light up, um, that really did happen when there was the German words. Um, he was absolutely delighted. Um, and they then got to, they picked, so we what, what went through the words and discussed them. Um, so some of them are very like um, this one, the German word, uh, Widen Shamkeit. So he got to pronounce it for us as well. So that was a uh, that was handy. Um, but the feeling of being alone in the woods, these words that don't have direct translations in English, but we were then able to kind of discuss whether we had that feeling and whether we could uh, relate. Um, so it was a really, really interesting way to kind of uh, from the exhibition already, they had the curiosity about these other languages. And this was a kind of a really kind of I, I feel like it kind of strengthened the kind of the intrigue in other languages. Um, another really interesting addition that was in the exhibition was uh, we had these tiny little booklets um, on different languages, so ones for Spanish, Polish, that um, had stuff like word searches, words to do with food, how to say hello, um, these kind of things that the students were actually able to take home with them as well. Um, and these are some of the artworks they then made in the workshop. So um, they picked one of the words from the list um, and created the artwork. So uh, this was the German word um, about for being alone in the woods. Um, this one was list, uh, the Irish word for, um, for the fairy fort on the side of the hill. And this one was um, Skimplini. Um, so this was, um, uh, effects of light dancing before your eyes, either real or imaginary. Um, so these were the kind of starting points. So this is what they created today in the space of 45 minutes in the workspace in the gallery. And they are going to go back to the classroom and um, kind of look over these words again and think more about how they could develop these artworks. So they are going to create an artwork in response to one of these words. Um, so yeah, and then their work is then going to be show on show uh, in uh, Ilan in uh, June and July. Um, so I think it's a really effective way to kind of, yeah, to just grow that sense of curiosity that they had. 
and just to kind of continue the conversation. Um, I also kind of gave them a, a list of questions so that when they're back in the classroom, um, they can kind of, they can continue to talk about the exhibition and uh, around this idea of kind of languages. Um, so talking about the amount of languages uh, that they know, uh, could they imagine a world, uh, what the world would look like if they didn't speak, um, how the rules of languages can differ. And these are questions that we discussed um, in the exhibition as well. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, being there on site with them um, really, it just shows how effective the exhibition was. It really just, they were, they were so alive with it. Um, and they had so many questions, uh, even from people, there was another girl actually who could speak Serbian. Um, just the, like the amount of questions that they got asking them about their languages. Um, and it just, it kind of just broke down barriers. Um, it was amazing to see, really, really, really effective show.